for a long time in my life, I felt like I've been living two different lives. There's the life that everyone sees, and then there's the life that only I see. In the life that only I see, who I am, who I really am, is someone who struggles intensely with depression. Now for someone who has never experienced depression or doesn't really know what that means, that might surprise them to hear because there's a pretty popular misconception that depression is just being sad when something in your life goes wrong. When you break up with your girlfriend, when you lose a loved one, when you don't get the job you wanted. But that's sadness, that's a natural thing, that's a natural human emotion. Real depression isn't being sad when something in your life goes wrong. Real depression is being sad when everything in your life is going right. For a long time, I think I was living two totally different lives, where one person was always afraid of the other. I was afraid that people would see me for who I really was, that I wasn't the perfect popular kid in high school everyone thought I was, that beneath my smile there was struggle, and beneath my light there was dark, and beneath my big personality just hid even bigger pain. So I sat on the edge of my bed, where I'd sat a million times before, and I was suicidal. I was suicidal, and if you were to look at my life on the surface, you, you wouldn't see a kid who was suicidal. You'd see a kid who was the captain of his basketball team, the drama and theater student of the year, the English student of the year, someone who was consistently on the honor roll and consistently at every party. So you would say I wasn't depressed, you would say I wasn't suicidal, but you'd be wrong. You'd be wrong. So I sat there that night beside a bottle of pills with a pen and paper in my hand, and I thought about taking my own life. The scariest part is that after a while, you become numb to it. It becomes normal for you. And what you really fear the most isn't the suffering inside of you. It's the stigma inside of others. It's the, it's the shame. It's the embarrassment. It's the disapproving look on a friend's face. It's the, it's the whispers in the hallway that you're weak. It's the comments that you're crazy. That's what, that's what keeps you from getting help. That's what makes you hold it in and hide it. It's the stigma. So you hold it in and you hide it. And you hold it in and you hide it. And even though it's keeping you in bed every day and it's making your life feel empty no matter how much you try and fill it, you hide it because the stigma in our society around depression is very real. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. You, so, you so, sort of put a mask on your face when you come to school and pretend that everything's okay when it's not and you go home and lay in your bed when no one's looking at you when you don't have to impress anybody and you're yourself and fear comes in maybe you don't know for sure what's going to be happening in the future and it scares you maybe you're about you maybe you're worried about what people think of you what people say about you just that fear paralyzes you and i just want to ask you today do you think you have hope there are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you've got to live with. The choice that we have though is either to give up or keep on going. I want to ask you, what are you going to believe? Are you going to believe in yourself? Are you going to believe everybody else's judgment on you? Are you going to believe people when they say that you're a failure and no one really likes you, no one really cares about you? You know the people that you have in your life who, no matter how good of a day you're having, they'll bring you down. Or no matter how bad of a day you're having, they'll bring you even lower. You know what I'm talking about? Think of the three biggest discouragers in your life. They're not your biggest discouragers. You are. We're all looking for something. We're all looking for hope. Hope you can't just have, just because you were born with hope. No, we're born with pain. We're born and live through difficulties. It's like you have to save your own life. Nobody's gonna be able to save it for you. So we have to do what we have to do, no matter what it is.
Depression is normal. It's normal to go through these bouts or these seasons where there is chaos and there's entropy, there's frustration, there's confusion, there's craziness in your life. Get past the fear and the ridicule and the judgment and the stigma of others. You can see depression for what it really is. And that's just a part of life. Just a part of life. And as much as I hate, as much as I hate some of the places, some of the parts of my life depression has dragged me down to, in a lot of ways, I'm grateful for it. Because, yeah, it's put me in the valleys, but only to show me there's peaks. And, yeah, it's dragged me through the dark, but only to remind me there is light. My pain more than anything in 19 years on this planet has given me perspective of my hurt. My hurts forced me to have hope, have hope and to have faith, faith in myself, faith in others, faith that it can get better, that we can change this, that we can speak up and speak out and fight back against ignorance, fight back against intolerance. And more than anything, learn to love ourselves. Learn to accept ourselves for who we are, the people we are, not the people the world wants us to be. Because the world I believe in is one where embracing your light doesn't mean ignoring your dark. The world I believe in is one where we're measured by our ability to overcome adversities, not avoid them. The world I believe in is one where I can look someone in the eye and say, I'm going through hell. And they can look back at me and go, me too, and that's okay. And it's okay because depression is okay. We're people. We're people and we struggle and we suffer and we bleed and we cry. And if you think that true strength means never showing any weakness, then I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. You're wrong because it's the opposite. That the mind and spirit of man advance when he's tried by suffering. The more ground is plowed, the better the seed will grow. The better the harvest will be. Just as the plow furrows the earth deeply, purifying it of weeds and thistles, so suffering and tribulation free man from the petty affairs of the worldly life until he arrives at a state of complete detachment. His attitude in this world will be that of divine happiness. Man is, so to speak, unripe. The heat of fire of suffering will mature him. Look back to the past times and you will find that the greatest men have suffered the most. The only way we're going to beat a problem that people are battling alone is by standing strong together.